Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're just going to finish off this series on my VFX workflow and we're going to finish it by pulling our VFX shots at full res from DaVinci Resolve. So in my previous video, I went through the whole process of how to prep your Avid project and how to export AAFs for Resolve and also reference clips. So if you missed that, go to my last video, have a look. So based on that video, um, I've now got a whole bunch of files that are all of my VFX pulls for um, the entire short film that I'm working on. This film has a lot of VFX. I'm just going to demonstrate this with a few shots so you guys can get the idea. So in one folder, I have all the AAFs that I created from Avid Media Composer. And in another folder, I have uh, reference files. And um, as you can see, I created reference files as MXF files, and then I also converted them into MP4 files. Um, and I did that because I'm going to use them for two different things. The MXF files are going to act as references inside of Resolve. They have time code embedded in them, and so Resolve is going to be able to match them up with my sequences, and I can check all of my sequences to make sure that they match. The MP4s don't have time code in them, so they're just these really small little preview files, and I'm just going to give those to the VFX artists so that they can have a look at them as a reference. So the MP4s aren't particularly useful um, for this workflow, but they might be useful to the VFX artists, so I usually just make them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these AAFs and we're going to bring them into Resolve. Now, I'm going to open up Resolve here. If you have a Resolve project that you already created for the show that you're working on, for example, if you did your original dailies in Resolve, um, then you can just go in and use that same project. But if you hadn't done that, you can still use Resolve to relink your files. Um, and you can do it with a completely fresh project. So I'm going to show you how that works. So I'm going to start a new project and I'm going to call it um, HMS VFX Pulse. Now, one thing that's really important uh, that I'll mention right off the bat here is I'm using right now the free version of Resolve to show this process. However, be careful because the free version of Resolve may not let you export your footage at its maximum resolution. Resolve is awesome software and I totally I'm so happy that they provide so many services for free, but once you get to resolutions that are above 4K, uh, in order to export at full res, you have to pay for Resolve. So I've opened up this new Resolve project. I'm gonna start by bringing all of my master clips from my camera files into the media pool. So I'm gonna to navigate to this hard drive where all of the master clips are, and I'm just gonna go in to the master media, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add all of these into the media pool. And I'm going to use this add folder and subfolders into media pool create bins command. And I just got that by right clicking. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to do this for all of my days of shooting because we have to make sure that Resolve can recognize this media first before we try to relink the AAFs. If you started a new project, it might also ask you if you want to match the frame rate. Um, always say yes. And always make sure to add both the A cameras and the B cameras. Okay, so now I've added all of my clips into my master media pool. They're in a bunch of subfolders, but um, that doesn't really matter where they are as long as Resolve knows that they exist. Uh, but what you will notice is that the real name column is empty. Sometimes this process works with an empty real name column. So, you know, if, if it's worked for you without filling in the real names, then you've gotten lucky. But as a best practice, I always like to make sure that I have something in the real name. And the simplest way to do that is to go into your project settings and under general options, you want to assist using real names from the, and I'm going to say um, source clip file name, um, and I'm going to click save. And so as you can see, it's created real names uh, based on each of the file names, and it's done that for all the clips. So you can just kind of pop into any of the subfolders and you can see that everything has real names because this is a project-wide setting that I've changed. Now that this is all here, um, we are ready to start importing our VFX pulls. So what I like to do is I like to make a new bin um, at the top level, VFX AAFs. And inside of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import an AAF. So I'm going to go to File, Import, Timeline, and as you can see, it's looking for a whole bunch of different types of files, um, AAFs, EDLs, XMLs. So depending on what you have, you can uh, import various different types of timelines. So I'm going to go to where I stored this, and I'm going to find my VFX pulls. And unfortunately, you cannot import more than one AAF at a time. You have to only do one at a time. So I'm going to start with the first one here. I'm going to click Open, and then it pops up this dialog box and asks how it 
I want the AAF imported. Um, so I'm going to leave the timeline name the same because that helps me to know what VFX shots it is. And what we want to make sure is by default, it's going to check off automatically import source clips into the media pool. We do not want it to import the source clips because what it's going to do is it's actually going to import the low res media from Avid Media Composer, which we don't want. What instead we want is we want to link to source camera files. The timeline resolution doesn't actually matter because in this case, we're going to be exporting clips individually. We're not going to be exporting the timeline. So you can just leave it at whatever it's defaulting to and uh, we're going to click OK. So then it's going to ask you, OK, you want to um, link to source camera files, where can I look to find these source camera files? And I say, well, you can look pretty much anywhere. So any of these master folders um, where I imported the media and I'm going to click OK. And boom, there it's done. And so I'm going to have a look here. Now I know because I know the shot, but I'm pretty sure that this is the right shot. Um, but what we also want, want to be able to do is we want to be able to make sure frame for frame that this is exactly the shot that we intended. So in order to do that, we're going to use the MXF reference files that I made earlier. So I'm going to make another bin. I'm going to call it VFX refs. And I'm also going to put that at the top level here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my media tab and I'm going to import the specific file that I know needs to be a VFX reference. And in Resolve, you have to import your VFX references differently than you import your regular media. So I'll show you how. So I'm going to go and I'm going to navigate to the VFX reference, it, reference that I made. It was shot 20. And I'm going to right click it and I'm going to say add as offline reference clip. So this is different from just bring it into the media pool. You have to add it as an offline reference clip. And now here it is and it shows up and it has this little checkerboard on it. So that's how you know that it's a reference clip. It's not a regular media clip. So then when I go into my AAF folder, what I can do is I can actually link these two files together. So I'm going to tell Resolve that this AAF and this VFX reference are supposed to match. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to click timelines and I'm going to click link offline reference clip. And so it has a lit, it'll have a list of however many reference clips I have brought in and it's going to ask me which one. And I say that one. Okay. So now those two files are linked together. So when I go into the edit section, I can actually have the offline reference appear on the left and the media appear on the right. And you do that by clicking down this bottom little film menu and you change it from source to offline. Boom. So here's my two shots. And as I scrub through, I can see that they are the same. Now, this is like a tricky one because we just have an eye, but like if you have a character who's moving or a camera that's moving, then it's really easy to see that you have a frame by frame exact match. So I'm going to do this one more time. We do it a little bit faster, but I'm going to talk through it again. So um, we're going into our AAFs. So we're going to go file, import timeline. Okay, I'm going to do the next one. This is scene one, shot 40. I'm going to uncheck import source clips into media pool, check link to camera files and click OK. I'm going to tell it that it can look anywhere in my media pool. OK, now here's what it's brought in. That looks right to me, but I want to make sure. So I'm going to go in and get a reference. And then I'm going to assign that reference to this clip. So now, as you can see, it's showing me the two options because I have two different clips in my uh, project that I've identified our references. So I have to make sure I pick the right one. And then here we go. So this one actually is even easier to see because the camera's moving up. You can see that it's correct. I'm just going to use those two examples and I'm going to go through to the final step, which is to export these. So I'm in the deliver window and what I'm going to do is it's very similar process to what I have shown in other videos about how to do an export from Resolve, um, except in this case, we're going to do an export based on whatever our VFX specs are. And you should be getting your spec information from your VFX artist or your VFX production house. So they'll be telling you exactly what types of files they want. What we're going to do is we're going to render individual clips. And this is what I meant when I said, because we're not really rendering the timeline. We're just using the timeline as a basis so that uh, Resolve knows which clips to pull. So it doesn't actually matter what the resolution of the timeline is. All that matters is the rev resolution of the clips themselves. So we're going to click individual clips. We're going to export the video. Um, and this is where you would just pick whatever your format is. So a really common format might be uh, EXR files um, with different types of compression or um, you might be asked to provide maybe a QuickTime file at Apple ProRes HQ resolution or XQ or something like that. So you just need to figure out um, what it is that you need to provide based on what your VFX 
vendor is telling you. So, and you also definitely want to make sure that you render at source resolution. Otherwise it's going to render at the resolution of the timeline. And then under advanced settings, you can usually just leave these as they are. But if you've been working in the project or if this is one of your original dailies projects, you might have a data burn in. So I would just like make sure to turn all, some of this stuff off so that you don't accidentally have a burn in on your VFX pulls because you don't want that. We can add handles and then pretty much everything else you can just leave as it is. Under audio, in this case, we're not exporting any audio. There is no audio. Um, and typically the audio, even if you do happen to have audio attached to these clips, I would recommend that you do not try to export any audio. If the VFX artist needs audio, they can use the reference clips that you created, the MP4 reference clips, particularly if you're exporting video in a format like EXR, you're not going to be able to get audio anyway. So I do not export audio with my polls. And then with the file name, usually I want to use the source name um, and um, I'm going to identify a place uh, where it's going to get saved. So I'm going to call this um, VFX footage. And I'm also going to make a subfolder. Now this is a bit of a pain in the butt because you got to do it every time. I'm going to make a subfolder based on the name, this name up here of the VFX shot so that I have subfolders for each one. So I'm going to put that in there. And then that's pretty much it. And then I am going to add that to the render queue. Let me do the other one as well. And then I'll show you the final step that I take when I package everything up so that I can send it to the VFX vendor. So I'm just going to go back. I'm going to open the other one. I'm going to go to the deliver window. Now it remembers all my settings, thankfully, so I don't have to do it again. Um, but I'm just going to double check anyway. So I'm going to, you know, do, in this case, we just, I'm doing a quick time because it's simple and uh, straightforward. Um, and the file, I'm going to put it in a different folder based on the name of this shot. And I'm going to add that to the render queue and I'm going to click render all. Okay, so now I've rendered out my files and I'm just going to go in, I'm going to have a look at them. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there is a, a limitation on the free version of Resolve that prevents you from exporting footage above 4K. So in this case, the reason that you see this little black square around it is because I'm using the free version of Resolve. So if you need to export full res above 4K, then you have to pay for Resolve. And that's pretty much the way that it works. But for the purposes of this example, you can still kind of see. Um, and if your VFX specs are such that you're exporting in UHD or 2K or even HD for your VFX artists, then it's not a problem the free version of Resolve will totally handle that. So now I have my two VFX shots and see I've put them in these little subfolders. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna package this up really nicely for my VFX artist. So as you'll recall, I had made MP4 versions of my reference clips. And so I'm just gonna pop them into the associated clip here. So now I've provided the reference for the artist as well as the original camera file. And the last thing that I'm gonna do, and I just do this because I always wonder if it's useful and no one's ever told me that it's not useful. So I will go into editing mode and I will export an edit index. And the edit index is just like a little CSV file that can be opened in Excel or you can, even can just be viewed in a simple text uh, piece of software that shows a little bit of time code and file name information about the files that I pulled. You, again, you have to do it one at a time, but if I open this up, it'll just show me, it'll show the real name, it'll uh, show me what video track it was, it'll show the source in and out, it'll provide like the take information, like just a, a few pieces of info that might be handy. So I always just like to pop that in as well. So I'm going to do that for both of these. So now I've got these like nice little handy edit indexes in each one. And I just, it just sort of helps. It shows the frame rate, it shows the original resolution and things like that. So if the VFX artists have any questions about the file, they can look there first. And then if they still need information, then they can get in touch with me. So as you can see, these are like little packages. There's one package per shot. And what I would do for any show is I would go through my entire list of AAFs and I would do that for every single one of them. And I would create all of these little packages. And it's really handy too, if you have multiple VFX vendors. So you just, you can very easily just send the different folders to different people. And that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. I hope this was useful for you guys. If, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to write in the comments. If you have workflows that you use that you think are better than this, by all means, let me know in the comments. I'm always interested to hear. 
If you like the video, please like and subscribe, and I will try to put out some more videos really soon. Thanks a lot.